morning, everybody. I'm Mike. I'm one of the pastors. I want to thank you for being here today. Um, in 2001, I was a young United Methodist pastor preaching at two United Methodist churches in uh, DeSoto, Missouri. One of my church members was Dorothy Hop Spangler, and, and Dorothy was a remarkable woman. I remember going to visit her in her final weeks battling cancer. And I went to offer care and support and to pray with her and her family. I also remember Dorothy had a lot of stories. Dorothy was a WASP, a Women's Air, For Air Force Service pilot during World War II. She flew planes and although she wasn't granted um, military honors back then, in 1977 the U.S. Air Force honored the WASPs with veteran status. She was not only a remarkable woman, she was a remarkable person of faith. Now since then I've preached many times in cemeteries much like this. And whenever I stand here, I'm reminded of the remarkable legacy in heroic service, well to me and to you. Um, I'm also reminded that some of these men and women gave their lives while serving their country and I'm honored to be standing in their witness. We're in the middle of a sermon series called Wonder Women, looking at the life and legacy of four remarkable women of faith. Today I wanna to look at one of the few, if not the only, uh, military leaders in the Bible who is a woman. Now her name's Deborah and you can find her story in Judges chapter four and five in the Old Testament. But let me give you a little bit of context and history. When God rescued the, the Jewish people from slavery in Egypt, he led them through the wilderness and, and then they had to set up a system of government. And God gave Moses first 10 commandments and then another 603 commandments to explain the 10 he already had given them. And he also had Moses set up a system of judges, people to help oversee and interpret the rules and mediate disputes between people. Now judges, if you put it in today's context, Moses would have kind of been the Supreme Court and then he would have had circuit judges and local judges, all of which would report to him. Um, this worked for Moses and it also worked for Josh, Joshua. But after Joshua, there wasn't a clear system to elect a leader. There wasn't a king, there wasn't a, a president. So there was a time of chaos until God raised up a leader, a judge named Athaniel. Now this is the beginning of the Old Testament book of Judges. Um, the book of Judges tells a story about 300 years when the Jewish people were led by 12 judges. And today we're going to look at the third judge. Her name is Deborah. Now she was remarkable in any way, including, as far as I can tell, she was the only judge who was also described as a prophet. And she was the only judge who was a woman. Now you can read about her story in Judges 4 and 5, but I want to highlight just three amazing things that is truly remarkable to me about Deborah. And here's the first one. Deborah brought out the best in those around her. The story begins with the Israelites oppressing, being oppressed by the Canaanites. And specifically, there was a general, Sisera, who had a much superior military technology. We're told in Judges 4.3 that they had 900 iron chariots, which was way beyond what the Jewish people had. Uh, but Deborah sent a message to Barak, who was the military leader, that God had been calling them to send 10,000 of their army to go out and defeat Sisera. But Barak was afraid. And he told Deborah they would only go if she went with them. Now this was interesting because Deborah's job was to oversee the rules, to interpret disputes, to oversee the judges. The judges typically weren't involved in the military leading. That was the job of the generals. That was Barak's job. But here, Barak and the army looked towards Deborah for their inspiration. 
Now I know this is a bad example, but I'm still going to use it. Uh, lately, I've been fascinated with the story, with the documentary *The Last Dance* about Michael Jordan. And if you're not a Michael Jordan fan, you're wrong. Uh, <laughs> um, no, it, it's a remarkable story, and Michael was a great leader. Nearly everybody, whether they liked him or not just admitted that Michael pushed them, inspired them, and encouraged them, and, and they won together as a team. Now that's Deborah. She inspired and brought the best out of everybody around her, and it was because of her remarkable faith. When Barack and the army, they focused on the 900 iron chariots, but Deborah, on the other hand, focused on the voice and the power of God. Let me read for you what she said, and this is from Judges 4, verse 8. Brock replied to her, If you go with me, I'll go, but if not, I'm not going to go. And Deborah answered, I will definitely go with you. However, the path you're taking won't bring honor to you because the Lord will hand over Sisera to a woman. And then Deborah got up and went with Brock to Kadesh. He summoned Zebulun and Nephetil to Kadesh and 10,000 men marched out behind him. Deborah marched out with him too. Now, when Deborah said that this path isn't going to give him the honor because the Lord was going to hand over Sisera to a woman, he, she actually wasn't talking about herself. She was talking about or prophesying about Jael, who eventually would kill Sisera while he was asleep. Now, one more thing that's interesting. Um, years ago, I don't know if you remember the movie Sandlot. If not, you need to go watch it. But there's this great line in there they, they were using to taunt somebody, and they said, you throw like a girl. Well, I just want you to know that I've met many girls and women who can throw a lot better than most guys, so that's really not an insult, and it could be a compliment in many cases. Now, Deborah here uses a very similar phrase, uh, and it's intended to be kind of a backhanded insult because in the male-dominated culture, that would have been an insult. But here, she was actually the strong and courageous leader who's bringing out the best in the people around her. Here's the second thing I want to notice about her. She was a true leader. You know, leaders really aren't defined by their position of authority. Leaders are defined by the people who follow them. Deborah had people following her, not because of a position, but because of her character, because of her faith. Let's go back. I want you to hear this in Judges 4, starting in verse 12. When it was reported to Sisera that Barak, Abinam's son, had marched up to Mount Tabor, Sisera summoned all of his 900 iron chariots and all the soldiers who were with him from Harasis and Gilum, you can read that for yourself, <laughs> to the Kishon River. Then Deborah said to Barak, Get up! This is a day that the Lord has handed Sisera over to you. Hasn't the Lord gone out before you? So Barak then went down from Mount Tabor with 10,000 men behind him. Now, while Barak had the position of general, the true leader in the story is Deborah. She was the one who actually everybody was really following. Now, I know there's some of us that don't see ourselves as leaders, but I can almost guarantee you that you have look, people looking towards you to lead them. As an older brother, my younger brother's probably watching this, I know that he looked up to me even though I didn't always recognize it. I see it in my nephews and niece when the younger ones look up to the older ones. I love watching children at church because children at church look around to the adults and they mimic and imitate what the adults do. If they see adults who are engaged and singing enthusiastic, kids will as well. And if they see adults who are falling asleep or playing on their phones or not really engaged, kids are going to learn that too. Why? Because they're following you as a leader. People at work, people at your school, just friends hanging out with you. People are following your action. Now here's what I love about Deborah's story. She didn't let 
All the obstacles stand in her way of her influence. She stood up, regardless of her gender or age or race or anything else. You can lead people because people are looking for you to follow them. And especially in this case, towards God. I love how Deborah led people to follow God. I want to go back to Judges 14. We're going to continue the story in verse 15. The Lord threw Sisera and all the chariots and army into panic before Barak. Sisera himself got down from his chariot and he fled on foot. He just ran away. And I love this phrase because it's actually very similar to what happened for the Jewish people at the Red Sea in Exodus chapter 14, verse 24. The Lord once again sent everybody into panic. And this is highlights that, that the victory wasn't Brock's accomplishment. It wasn't even Deborah's accomplish, accomplishment. Who was it? It was the Lord's. God was the one who won the battle. <clears throat> and this is so powerful <clears throat> because sometimes we think that the battle is our responsibility. I'm sure that's why Brock was scared. He thought there's no way we can beat 900 iron chariots. <clears throat> and he was probably right. He couldn't. But with God's help, God did. This is important because if you're facing an overwhelming battle right now, I want you to know that you're not alone. And most importantly, whenever the Lord goes before you, whenever you follow God's call, whenever you do what God calls you to do, then it's really not your battle to begin with. It's God's. Even when you're facing something as scary as 900 iron chariots, God will carry you through. And that brings me to the third thing I want to mention about Deborah. Deborah was a remarkable woman of faith. She inspired others to be faithful to God's call, to not trust in themselves, but to trust in God. As you continue with the story, it gets a little bit gruesome. And spoiler alert, Jael actually kills Sisera in her tent. But God does help Israel win. And God gives them a, a time of peace that they hadn't had for decades previously. And in Judges 5, you actually see a song that was written by Deborah and Brock together. It was a song praising what God had done. It was a song giving glory to the one who won the battle. God was the source, but Deborah was the vehicle. It was because of her faith. Her story is an inspiring story to me, especially as I stand in the shadow of these graves. Here's the legacy around us of many courageous men and women who faithfully served in countless ways. Rob Murphy, one of our church members, sent me the story of Sergeant Tracy Brogdon, who died in service in his company in 1991 in Saudi Arabia. And his unit still celebrates her life every Memorial Day. Jesus said this in John 15, 13, no one has greater love than to somebody who gives up their life for their friends. You know, that actually points us to what Jesus did on the cross. But it also reminds us of people who have given their lives for you and for me, who've served in courageous ways. There are many here who fell in line with the legacy of Deborah, a wonder woman of faith who inspired and, and brought out the best in others, who led others especially to be faithful to God's call. And that legacy challenges us to do the same. Amen? Let me pray for us. God, thank you for this time together. Thank you for the witness of we're surrounded by. Thank you for, most of all, your love that in Jesus Christ leads us to not trust in ourselves but to lean into you. Help us to be bold. Help us to be courageous. Help us to lead in the legacy of Deborah and countless others. We thank you, Almighty God, in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you next week.